Welcome back everybody to another CUDA worksheet tutorial. Today we're doing the law of detachment and syllogism for all of you geometry students out there. Now one thing you'll know is this actually isn't a CUDA worksheet tutorial. I'll just, I just typed that in here and I used some white out to cover up what it actually says. But we're just, for the intents and purposes, we're calling it a CUDA worksheet tutorial. So we can just put it in the playlist and I'm not creating another one just, just for this subject. But it's hard to find some of these CUDA worksheets, but I'm guessing a lot of your teachers are gonna give you worksheets similar to this, therefore I'm making this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Law of detachment, the law of syllogism. So this first part is we're gonna talk about the law of detachment, then um, syllogism is down below. All right, so the law of detachment states that if a conditional is true and its hypothesis is true, then it's, you get to change color here, conclusion must also be true, okay? So the hypothesis is red, conclusion in blue, and this is essentially is what it's saying. If we have a true hypothesis, and I'm getting just, I'm doing some legwork here. If we have a true conclusion, or conditional, so this is a true conditional. If that's true, and the hypothesis is true, then we can form a true conclusion, uh, conclusion with um, that information. Okay, but these, this is kind of like the, the prerequisite. We have to have this going on first before we get to this, okay? Let's put it into practice. It makes a little bit more sense once we go through examples. And I'm gonna go through every example on here. It's, it's really not that bad, it's not tough. So we'll be able to do it relatively quickly. I think this will be under 10 minutes. If two lines are parallel, then they do not intersect. Well, maybe even sooner than that. So if two lines are parallel, that's our hypothesis always. Identify your hypothesis and conclusion. Hypothesis follows if, conclusion follows then. Okay, so we have our conditional. If two lines are parallel, then they do not intersect. That is true. Okay, uh, line A is parallel to line B. So now we have another hypothesis. Okay, here's the thing. It's basically the same hypothesis we had before, but now it has more detail. That's essentially the key to all these problems. It presents you the same uh, format as the conditional. So the first line was the conditional, but now it just gives a little bit of information. It talks about line A and line B. It just, does, just doesn't talk about two lines in general. It's specific. Line A is parallel to line B. Now we can form a conclusion using those details. So make sure you use the new details in your conclusion. So let's form a conclusion with those new details. And it's very important that these two things, the, the hypothesis and the conditional and the new hypothesis right here, the hypothesis in the original and the new hypothesis, these need to match. They need to both be true and they need to be saying the same thing in a matter of words, okay? So now we can form a true conclusion, okay? The conclusion, first conclusion was they do not intersect. We're gonna restate the conclusion using the new details. So we're gonna say line A, whoops, that's not how you spell line. <laughs> line A and line B do not intersect. See how I'm saying the same thing, but I'm just giving it a little bit more clarity same sentence, same uh, framework as the conditional, but I'm just giving it a little bit more detail that I provided in the second hypothesis, okay? Let's proceed now that you see the pattern. Should be a little bit easier. If three points lie on the same line, then they are collinear. Identify our hypothesis here, conclusion here. They are collinear. Now we see that we have Points A, B, and C line, lie on line L. Lots of L's here, and I'm taking one. Okay, now, does this match, first thing, does this match the hypothesis? Yes, it's all talking about lying on the same line, but now it's giving a little bit more specifics. And instead of just three points, we're given specific points, A, B, and C, and it's just some line, we're talking about line L. So this does match, that's the first step. Do they match? Yes. Match, question mark. This is step one. Okay, and then step two would be this one. Use the new details. Okay, and that's only if it's yes. 
So now that we have the details and they match, we can write the conclusion. Points A, B, and C are collinear. So there we go. Okay. Next one, and we're done. That's it. We're just asked to form a conclusion. It says use a, to draw a conclusion if possible. It is possible because they match, uh, and then we just give more details in our conclusion. If the measures of two angles have a sum of 90 degrees, then the angles are complementary. Okay, both of those are true. That's a true statement. There's a hypothesis. There's our conclusion. The angles are complementary. Does this match the first hypothesis? Yes, it's talking about the sum. Measure of angle one plus measure of two equals 90. That's the same thing. It's saying that I have a sum of 90 degrees. So because these match, now we can use the new details. Instead of just two angles, we know it's measure of, I'm gonna put angle one and, oh, I don't need to put the measure. I can just say angle one and angle two are complementary. Not just any angles. Now that we have details, we can say that we're talking about angles one and two are complements. I'm gonna put Terry. Okay. Next one. If two figures are congruent, their areas are equal. The area of ABCD equals the area of WXYZ. Huh. Okay, something's amiss here. What's going on? This is not saying anything about congruent. This does not match the hypothesis. This matches the conclusion, but that is not the law of detachment. That's a logical fallacy. You can get into trouble doing that because um, I'm trying to think of a quick example. There's other scenarios where it's also true. You can think of counterexamples if you base it off of the conclusion. Okay, it's like saying um, all robins are birds, and then you can say. Uh, all birds are robins. No, you can't say that because a lot of birds, there's a lot of different types of birds, okay? Uh, when there's areas that are equal, doesn't necessarily mean that they're congruent. They could be different, the same shape, or excuse me, have the same area, but um, their dimensions are a little bit different. So it doesn't equate the two. But if two figures are congruent, then they are equal. So this one, we are gonna write no conclusion. Okay, I kind of give you two quick examples. Rewind it if you, if you need it. Now, syllogism is a little bit different than what we've done before. Syllogism is kind of like a logical extension. So if something happens, then this. I think uh, there's a famous book called If You Give a Mouse a Cookie or If You Give a Moose a Muffin. I think there's, there, those are two of them. And they kind of talk, of, if you do this, then that's gonna happen. And if that happens, then something else happens and so on and so forth, okay? Now, the breakdown of what this looks like is this. Okay, so then you have this, and then we have a green R. So if the conclusion of one becomes the hypothesis of the next statement, then this is following the law of syllogism, and you can state this final piece of information, which is if P, then R. This is essentially the Q if it serves as a conclusion of one and the hypothesis uh, of the other, it essentially is a bridge between the two, making this a true statement. Okay, so we're gonna put this into practice here to show you why that's the case. If a quadrilateral is a square, hypothesis, then it has four right angles, conclusion. Now, the next statement, the next conditional statement, uh, needs to have the conclusion as a hypothesis. A quadrilateral has four angles, four right angles. Okay, it just gives a little bit more information, but it's saying the same thing. It omitted uh, quadrilateral here and it said it. It is the same thing as quadrilateral, it matches. Okay, so this matches, we're good. And what's the final thing it's saying? It's saying it is a rectangle. So now we can write our conclusion statement. We can conclude if a quadrilateral, lateral, is a square, then it is a rectangle. And that's true. A square is a type of rectangle. Okay, so that's our logical conclusion we can draw. If you, let's do the next one. If you understand the law of syllogism, okay, very tongue in cheek here, you will do well on the test. If you do well on the test, notice how these match and they actually match, match exactly. 
So really obvious here that we're going to be okay with the law of uh, syllogism. You will get a passing grade. Okay, let's connect the two. Uh, if you understand the law of syllogism, okay, I wish I could have shorthand this. This is the fastest I can write. You will get a passing grade. Okay, very good. Next one. Let's see if the pattern continues. A number ends in zero. It is divisible by 10. If it's divisible at 10, then it's divisible by five. Okay, all good here. The, two, the conclusion becomes the hypothesis of the next one. So if a number ends in zero, then it's divisible, and that's true. It's divisible by five. Okay, on to the last one. Uh, a number ends in zero, then it's divisible by 10. If a number ends in, okay, now we have something else. Look, we have a new guy on the scene. A number ends in five. This does not match, okay? So we can't just say, connect these two things. Even though it's true, this is a bad setup, okay? Even though numbers, um, that end in zero are divisible by five. This is a bad setup. These need to match. The conclusion of one needs to match the hypothesis. So we're gonna say no conclusion. No conclusion. You could put no conclusion. <laughs> no conclusion possible. Okay, and this stuff down here is just review. You don't need to worry about that. This ends the tutorial on this particular CUDA worksheet. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time on West Explains Best.